weekend means you'll be paying more at the pump. Plus, sites where you can use the Internet for free. WAD News starts right here, right now. The Rainbow Push Coalition is expected in Macon County Court tomorrow to request that they be allowed to attend Friday's graduation ceremonies in Decatur, despite an injunction banning them from school grounds. Some critics say the Reverend Jesse Jackson's presence will turn graduation into a media circus, but he says that's not the case. To promote Decatur's number one ranking by Forbes magazine as the best small city in the country to do business, the city of Decatur will team up with the Chamber of Commerce and the Economic Development Corporation. If you're heading out by car this Memorial Day weekend, plan on paying more for gas. Prices have jumped again just in time for the holiday, and as Unheap High reports, consumers are griping all the way to the pump. Cougar's departure is not just a loss for the University of Illinois Athletic Department. Our John Cater shows you why Cougar will be missed in our community, too. Decatur city leaders could decide on a leaf disposal plan Monday night. City council members are expected to recommend one of two leaf vacuuming plans at a special meeting Monday night. Under one plan, residents would call a city licensed collector when they want leaves removed. Under the other plan, it would establish a citywide weekly vacuuming service. Their plans are needed because a leaf burning ban goes into effect October 1st. Some of the best anglers are going after Lake Shelbyville's biggest bass this weekend. Good evening. The controversy began September 17th. A fight broke out in the stand. Reverend Jesse Jackson said tonight that he will lead the expelled students back to Eisenhower High School tomorrow morning at 7.30. Thank you, Anhe, for that report. Although classes at Decatur's three high schools were canceled for a second day, Reverend Jackson went again to Eisenhower High School. A large crowd of students, parents, and supporters cheered when Jackson arrived this morning, but there were also a few dissenters there. Police escorted away one parent who was angry his child missed school for a second day. Another parent says Jackson's involvement has blown everything out of proportion. You know, tomorrow starts the inaugural ball at 11 a.m. on the south steps of the Capitol, so I think a lot of people are clearing out here early to get some rest so they can be there in time for the inaugural tomorrow at 11. And then the House and the Senate will meet tomorrow for the first day. Reporting live from the Expo Center, I'm Cheryl Sutton. So they will have enough money so that all of these mothers who are going to work will have child care for one year. Or at least one year, yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Did, would that help? I, I saw you earlier shaking your head when Ms. Harris was talking. Is the one year of child care really going to make the difference for you to go to work? Yes, ma'am, it will. I'm from Perry County. The only problem we have is we don't have no jobs. We have to drive 50, 60 miles just to get a job. And that's our problem now. How do you get 50 or 60 miles away? Do you have your own car? The skies are dark. I'm Cheryl Sutton here at the Balloon Classic. I'll tell you why these gloomy skies could put a damper on opening day. But first, Tom, do you see any storms heading our way? What are some of the stereotypes people have about fat? And I wanted to say fat, and some people think that's a bad word. Is that a bad word? That's right. We will have Christina later. But if you're not into junk music, there are plenty other sorts of sounds to hear out here. Everybody wants to be Pamela Anderson right. or, or Barbie. These young women all want breast implants. I actually wanted them for my graduation present when I graduated from high school. They say images like these have driven their desire. 21-year-old Brandy Headley called 10 plastic surgeons before she had her surgery. Not a single doctor told her the saline implants are not FDA approved. No. Are you sure? They're not. No, I didn't know that. In 1978, the first serious injury complaint was filed against saline breast implants. And since that time, more than 24,000 American women have filed complaints with the FDA. Despite this, all the plastic surgeons we talk to say saline breast implants are harmless. The saline is benign. Uh, if it ruptures, they simply uh, absorb it and excrete it. Saline implants, like gel implants, have bacteria that colonize the space between the capsule and the implant, the scar capsule in the implant. And again, depending on what kind of bacteria they are, that can also cause problems. For them. This doesn't worry Andrea Woodard. She's saving up for the $4,000 surgery, even though her mother doesn't want her to do it. I have begged her not to even consider doing this. Her mother had to have her implants removed when she had serious medical complications like joint and muscle pain. To be honest with you, it's been a living hell. Oh, she doesn't want me to. She said I will never, ever get them. But I think they've learned a lot more than when she got them in 85. 
With as many hours as most of us work, it's no surprise if it feels like your second home. But whereas you can call in sick with the flu, or you can call in sick with a broken leg, or severe pain from a disease like arthritis, most Americans don't tell their boss when they're suffering from depression. Why? It has everything to do with the bottom line. Kept secret. At first, Mike Autry hid his severe depression from co-workers, which meant paying for a psychiatrist out of his own pocket. Mike didn't want to red flag his employer by filing it on the company insurance, but then... Yeah, one day I was at work, next day I was in the hospital, so uh, at that point I just had to not worry about what people thought. Instead, he had to worry about the bills because his insurance only picked up half the tab. Yeah, put a drain financially on my family. According to Blue Cross Blue Shield Alabama, not much has changed since Mike's hospitalization a decade ago. On average, mental health substance abuse coverage is capped after 30 doctor visits, a month in the hospital, and $2,000 of treatment. Workers aren't the only ones losing money to depression. According to the National Institute for Mental Health, depression costs American businesses more than $20 billion a year. Many corporations and businesses are downsizing to become more efficient, and this is indeed putting a great deal of stress on employees. Meanwhile, antidepressant pharmaceutical makers are cashing in. We found this Eli Lilly ad in our Sunday newspaper Parade magazine. It claims 17 million Americans have been prescribed Prozac. You have less side effects, you have uh, less time off from work, less physicians with visits. And while workers like Mike wait for better mental health insurance, pharmaceutical companies are busy formulating new drugs to sell. According to IMS America, a company that tracks sales of antidepressants, Americans spent more than $4 billion on the drugs. And the way 1997 is headed, profits will exceed that this year. We got industry almost shut down out here and school young and shut down. It's a real problem and Representative Jeff Dauber knows firsthand since he teaches at Fruitdale School. You see the county engineer had to post weight restrictions on several bridges leading to the school. For Fruitdale's principal it means crossing the bridge more often with fewer students on the bus. We had to leave earlier in some cases. We had to, uh, like I say, uh, reroute routes. To replace the bridges would cost about five million dollars. Washington County doesn't have that sort of money, and last year their federal highway matching funds were only $412,000. That's right. Washington County residents are pitching a combo tax, a tax on gas, a tax on tags, and a sales tax increase, because the bridge problem affects not only school buses, but industry trucks, too. It's a need that we have to get our products to the mill. If we can't get our products to the mill efficiently and cost effectively, then it becomes to be a more costly item and consumers will notice in the grocery store at some point. When you mention taxes, everybody kind of turns everybody off. Governor Bob James has said he wants to call a special session to try and pass his $700 million highway bond, which failed in the regular session. If you include interest, it will cost more than a billion dollars after 20 years for payment. Meanwhile, in Washington, Congress is renegotiating the federal highway bill, which could mean millions more for the state of Alabama. Good evening. More legal problems for one of the expelled Decatur students is our top story at 6. Police arrested Roosevelt Fuller last night on domestic battery and aggravated assault charges. Victoria Gaither joins us now live from the Macon County Courthouse with the very latest. Victoria. LaShawn and Cheryl. School suspensions and expulsions are topics of debate tonight in central Illinois. Reverend Jesse Jackson stayed in Springfield today with plans to strengthen a campaign which began in Decatur. John Cater has that story live from Springfield. John? Thanks, John. The Rainbow Push Coalition is appealing a federal judge's ruling January 11th, which upholds the expulsion of the six Decatur students. The two-page appeal was filed Monday, but no date has been set for a panel of three appeals court judges to hear the case in Chicago. The federal judge ruled the school board was within its rights to expel the students after a fight at a football game in September. The federal government will soon be keeping a closer eye on state child welfare agencies. Starting in March, state agencies will be held accountable if children suffer abuse or neglect in foster home. Good evening. A propane leak at the Phillips Petroleum Company in Forsyth 
Tops, WAND News at 6. No one was hurt, but it did force the company to evacuate its employees. Unhee Pai has been covering the story since the very beginning, and she joins us now with the story. Unhee? Great. Thanks, Bob. And thanks to the timely rain, Central Illinois cornfields are very tall right now. And that all uh, tall corn can create a hazard at rural intersections. Our Scott England shows you how deputies in one Central Illinois county are trying to make those intersections safer. Scott. Sean and Cheryl, it's a Macon County jury has found a Decatur man guilty of a lesser charge for the shooting death of his sister. 18-year-old Richard Holgarth was convicted of involuntary manslaughter after a two-day trial. Holgarth claimed he accidentally shot his 13-year-old sister in the head with a high-caliber handgun in his apartment last year. Prosecutors charged Holgarth with first-degree murder. Holgarth could face a maximum of five years in prison when he's sentenced in September. Still ahead on WND News at 6.